Hazard assessment, it's at the root of incident prevention in the workplace. We work together to mitigate risk before the work even starts. You'll be required to use our risk matrix card. Now, this is a tool designed to rank hazards in the workplace. It uses a combination of the consequences and the probability of a given hazard in order to numerically define the outcome. And here's how. Consequence is the result of an incident occurring. The risk matrix evaluates how serious the consequences are for people, equipment, the environment, and the company. Probability is the likelihood that the identified hazard will result in an incident. It falls into one of three categories, low, medium, and high. Now, these are designated on the risk matrix card in a color code, similar to a traffic light. The first category is a low hazard and is represented as green. A green means you are able to proceed with the task safely. This category covers acceptable risks. You will need to work toward controlling the hazards and risks associated with your work. The second category is a medium hazard, seen as yellow on the risk matrix card. Yellow means caution. You can't proceed until you have mitigated the risk to an acceptable, safe level. The third and last category is a high hazard, seen as red on the risk matrix card. Again, think of risk as a traffic light. What do you do at a red light? You stop until it's safe to go. Work that falls under the red category cannot proceed until you and your supervisor ensure that it's safe. This might mean going to the next level of supervision in order to ensure that the risk is mitigated to a safe level. So let's take a more in-depth look at the risk matrix. Now in this area of the card, you'll find definitions for probability and severity. These will be your guide as to what number or risk color your work falls under. Now let's just take a minute to look at how severity is broken down under the people category. There are five categories of severity, catastrophic, critical, major, moderate, and minor or first aid. Catastrophic means a potential fatality could occur. Work does not take place if this potential exists. Critical means a permanent impairment or long-term injury or illness could happen. We won't authorize anyone to work in an environment that could cause this type of incident. Major means an injury serious enough to require time away from work or restricted work. Moderate means you could suffer a serious injury that would restrict you from doing your work. This might include cuts that need professional medical attention or eye injuries. And the last category under severity is minor or first aid. Now this means that the worst injury that might happen would be a minor cut or a bump. Now these injuries wouldn't impact your home life or your work. The majority of our work will fall under this category. Once you've identified the severity of a given task, you can then identify the probability of an event taking place. A probability is broken down into five categories on this card. And they're based on how often an event is likely to occur. Frequent means that a specific event would likely occur repeatedly. Probable means the event would likely occur several times. Occasional means the event is likely to occur sometime. Remote means the event isn't likely to occur, but it is possible. And improbable means that the likelihood of the event occurring is very low or zero. On the reverse side of the risk matrix card, you can assess the severity and the probability by aligning column and row. Now this will give you a number and a color. For example, if severity is moderate and probability frequent, the result on the matrix is in the red section at 10. That color and number means the risk is unacceptable. 
you need to mitigate the risk prior to proceeding with the task. The other component to hazard identification is developing a task hazard assessment or THA. This is a fundamental step in hazard identification. Now, this is where you'll document your task and the steps required to complete your work safely. Look at it as a planning tool. Once you've been assigned your daily work by your supervisor, for example in the morning tailgate meeting, take a look at the form and what's required of you. The top part of the form shows the basic information, such as customer, location, date, and job number. The description explains the specific task to be completed. This is very important as it identifies what you will be doing. This will help you set out the steps required to complete the task from start to finish. Here's an example. Your supervisor assigns you the task of fabricating a pipe spool. Now, if we break down the job into steps, it looks like this. Step 1, moving material. Step 2, supporting the material. Step 3, aligning the flanges to the pipe. Step 4, grinding. And step 5, welding. And once you have the basic steps set out, look at the hazards for each one of the steps. Ask yourself, what could go wrong during that task? Some of the hazards might be getting struck by pipe, getting caught between the pipe and a stationary object, having an unsecured load, slips or falls over equipment, tools, or uneven ground. Using those hazards, evaluate the risk. So what is the severity and probability based on those hazards? If the risks aren't controlled, the risk matrix card shows you could have potential for a fatality. Well, that puts you into the catastrophic category. What's the probability of having a fatality if you don't control the hazards identified? Now, using the tool again shows that it's occasional. That means it's likely to occur as you remember from before, align the row and column to arrive at a number and color. The example shows 15, putting you in the red. Put that in the risk column next to the hazards. That means we cannot proceed with the job until we put controls or precautions in place to mitigate the risk to an acceptable level. So how do you control a hazard like being struck by pipe? Well, you have several options. You can use tag lines to control the load, have proper signals and eye contact with the operator, and follow the safe lifting, safe work practice. You also need to inspect slings, use proper rigging techniques, and identify a clear route of travel. These are some of the controls that can be put in place to mitigate the hazards identified. You can also combine controls. Use as many as you need to make sure you're working safely. Now that the controls are in place, let's review the risk matrix card. We've lowered the potential severity now that we have control of the load and clear communication. Let's say the risk is now moderate on your risk matrix card and the probability of an injury taking place is remote. Align the column and row. Your new risk number is four and in the green. This number goes next to the precautions you documented. The initial box is for the person who is going to ensure that the precautions put in place are followed. The final risk index number at the bottom right side of the THA is for the highest number after all precautions are put in place the originator and the supervisor will then sign off on the THA. On the reverse side of the THA, there are spaces for all the members of your crew to sign, as well as any visitors that may come into your work area. Now make sure they review it first, just a signature won't keep you out of harm's way. There are also spaces for your emergency response phone number and muster points. 
check that these are correct every day, as you may change location on a regular basis. The last part is the follow-up and review. After your breaks are at scheduled times throughout the day, take the time to revisit your THA. Make sure you've addressed any new or changing work task and initial when you're done. So always keep your THA updated and make sure everyone knows what hazards to be aware of.